Welcome to the Luggable XL Kits assembly video. Here are the parts. A long bottom panel, a top panel for five fans, and two side panels, one with two fan holes. We've unpacked our seven Cooler Master Sickle Flow fans and we have our fan grills ready to install. You'll notice some parts like handles and retainer clips are pre-attached. Place the fan grills popping upward. We like to alternate their orientations and next we'll start inserting the push pins. They don't have to go in quite all the way yet. We'll push them in all the way at a later step. Now we're going to turn the panel over and place our sickle flow fans with the wire coming out one side consistently and the holographic sticker facing us. This will be facing inside the box. This helps the fan actually blow outward from the box to create greater air circulation in the room and keep the fan blades clean. Now we're going down the line and pushing them onto the pins with our palms. Now to really fully seat the pins and make sure there's no gaps, we're going to take the butt end of our mallet or a hammer and push those into the table. Never hammer on the pins because that can break the pins. Just push them down on a firm surface and they'll seat all the way. Now we're going to repeat these steps for the short side with two fan holes. If you just have a luggable, you won't have these two fan holes. Now we're applying the foam strips to the short sides only. The long sides don't need the foam strip for sealing because the filter cardboard edges are smoother on the long side and should fit flush. Make sure the foam strips stretch from the top to the bottom edge completely, leaving no holes at the corners. Also notice we're placing the foam strip a little, a little inside of the edge, uh, about half a centimeter from the edge of these panels because that's where the filter will be centered. Now we're installing bumpers on the blank short side in case you want to sit the unit up tall with five fans blowing uh, to the side and two fans blowing up. This unit also has a handle on the bottom, but newer kits will only have a handle on the opposite short side. Now we're placing the panels into the slotted panel, panel connectors to form our box. The gaffer tape on each end of the panel helps the slots hold a good friction fit on each panel. The bungees and tension wire will do the rest of the work in holding the box together.
Now we're ready to insert a filter into one side to provide some structural support for our box. You can see the droop in the top fan panel immediately goes away once it's supported by a filter. Next, install this stainless steel tension wire. Hook into the hole in the retainer clip between these two fans and then hook the retainer clip hole on the opposite side. Now we have tension on the long axis. And here we're connecting our fan harness. This unit has a five-way hub and we'll also be using a three-way splitter. Newer kits may have a single unified seven socket harness Now, if you're just building a luggable, you would be done at this point if, with the five-way hub. But since we have an XL, we need to create a daisy chain extension using the three or four-way splitter. And that's going to go to the fifth fan on the top and the last two fans. Again, newer kits may have a custom seven socket harness, so you won't need to create this daisy chain. Next, we need to secure the harness or the hubs and splitters to make sure that we keep all the wires away from the fans and their spinning blades. And we're gonna use the provided zip ties to do that we're zip tying the five-way harness onto the tension wire. And the next zip ties will go around any cables that have slack to pull them towards the central tension wire, towards the center of the box. Where they're secure and out of the way of the fans. Okay, one of the last steps is to put the tension cord through a back fan hole to its screw hole and then tie a single loop knot. And we used, like to use the screw holes on the second and the fourth fans to kind of create a V. So just thread the cord through one of the holes, pull it through, and make a single loop knot once you've created some tension. And here I push the filter out doing this, but we can easily put it back in. And this will create a tight fit on the long axis against the filter edges. Finally, we're ready to insert the last filter. This filter is caught up in the upper right corner, so I'm going to use a butter knife or a putty knife to slide along the side and try to find where it may be catching against the foam or the cardboard at the edges. So 
so that the filter can slip in all the way. And plug in to our wall charger. Check that all the fans are spinning and not making any clicking noises, which might indicate some obstruction. 